fascinating to think about, you know, there being all of these ideas kind of swimming, you know, almost with the noise all around the world, all the different generations, and then some kind of nonlinear thing happens where they percolate up and and uh, capture the imagination of the mainstream. Yeah. And that seems to be what's happening with AI now. Yeah, I mean, Nietzsche, who you mentioned, had the idea yeah. of the Superman, right? Yeah. But he he didn't understand enough about technology to think you could physically engineer a Superman by piecing together mole molecules in, in, in a certain way. He he was a bit vague about how how the, how the Superman would appear, but he was quite deep at thinking about what the state of consciousness and the mode of cognition of, of a Superman would be. He, he was a very astute analyst of you know, how the human mind constructs the illusion of a self, how it constructs the illusion of free will, how, how it constructs values like, like good and evil out of its own, you know, desire to maintain and advance its own organism. He understood a lot about how human minds work. Then he understood a lot about how post-human minds would work. I mean, the Superman was supposed to be a mind that would basically have complete root access to its own brain and consciousness and be able to architect its its own its own value system and inspect and fine tune all, all of its own its own biases so that's a lot of powerful thinking there which then fed in and, and sort of seeded all of postmodern continental philosophy and all, all, all sorts of of things that have been very valuable in development of culture and indirectly even even of technology but of course without the technology there it was all some quite abstract thinking. So now, now we're at a time in history when a lot of these ideas can be can be made real, which is amazing, yeah. amazing and scary, right? It's kind of interesting to think. What do you think Nietzsche would uh, if he was born a, a century later or transported through time? What, what do you think he would say about AI? I mean, well, those are quite different. If he's born a century later or transported through time, well, he'd be <laughs> he'd be on like TikTok and Instagram, and he would never write the great works he's written. So well, let's yeah, transport I mean, him through maybe, time. Maybe also Sprach Zarathustra would be a music video, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, who, who, who knows? Yeah, but if he was transported through time, do you think uh, it, that that'd be interesting? Actually, to go back, uh, you, you just made me realize that it's possible to go back and read Nietzsche with an eye of is there some thinking about artificial beings. I'm sure there he has incl he had inklings. I mean, with Frankenstein before him, I'm sure he had inklings of artificial beings somewhere in the text. It'd be interesting to see, to try to read his work to see if he had an, if if uh, uh, Superman was actually an AGI system, like if he had inklings of that kind of thinking. He didn't. He didn't. No, I I, I would say not. I mean, he had. He had a lot of inklings of modern cognitive science, which are right. very interesting. If you look in like the the third part of of the collection that's been titled "The, the Will to Power," I mean, in, in book three there, there's there's very deep analysis of thinking processes. But he he wasn't so much of a physical tinkerer type uh, type guy, right? He, he, he was very abstract and.